So, and we are getting these recordings now finally correct and on, um, and they're being placed on the, the website. Sheila's done a good job of getting our class website fixed up. You'll find the questions there. You'll find the recording of the previous class there uh, and all kinds of different things. So um, I really appreciate her doing that. So yes. let's die. Yeah. Any, yes. Somebody saying something? Go that, ahead. That's on the church website. That's on the church website. Yes. If you go to the main page, it'll guide you right there. There'll be a link to it. It'll take you right to that link. Okay. <laughs> max class you can also look under cl adult classes as well and it'll get you there so we read the first chapter uh let's begin with a word of prayer and then we will we'll dig right in okay all right uh let's pray lord we thank you so much for being with us in this time of pandemic as we struggle to understand how we are to place you and your love and what we believe about you in the context of this terrible time for so many people. Lord, we seek you, and we thank you, Lord, that N.T. Wright has, has explored the scriptures and, and the theology and how, Lord, we can approach you with this. So be with us as we begin to work on this class and answer questions, and um, thank you so much for being with us this day. We love you, Lord, and and we have those who we will lift in prayer, Lord, during our worship service, and we pray for them. Keep us always in your loving care and your holy name, we pray. Amen. So I'm going to share the screen, uh, and we're going to look at, okay, uh, where do we start? That was chapter one, and I'm looking here at chapter one. And I've made some notes. Now, I thought where we would start first are the study guide questions. Then I've made some notes, my own notes. Uh, I got to let then I've made some of my own notes uh, as I read through. Chapter one was a very short chapter. We all saw that, right? Very short chapter. Uh, but where do we start? And that's the question that N.T. Wright is asking. So I'm going to go to um, this study guide here. I'm going to put it on the board. Here we go. All right. And um, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so we can all see it. There are not many questions, just a few. But those few questions are good ones, okay? Uh, everybody can see uh, what I'm doing here. Can everybody see the uh, uh, the, the questions? All right. Uh, I can't see everybody on my screen right now because I'm sharing the screen. But just holler if um, you know, and I'll, I'll 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 pick you up. All right. Just just feel feel free to say hey Mac. Okay. So first question, and I'm just gonna open this up. We'll see how it goes before we do any breakout rooms. How it goes just to open this up and let you answer. First question he asked, having looked at the first chapter, reflect on where you were when you first heard about COVID-19. What was your first reaction? Has your prayer life changed since the onset of COVID-19? Who wants to tackle that? Well, I can jump in. I was still in school um, and the students started talking about it. And most of us just kind of brushed it off. It was just another virus going around. And if we were careful and washed our hands, everybody would be fine. Um, of course, that changed right after spring break. Right. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> and I think as far as my prayer life changing, I think I'm doing more conscious praying for individuals. Um, and people that are affected by it. Very good. Does anybody else want to share? Well, we talked about it in choir just one-on-one -on -one because Hua is from China. And we're like, oh, you got back. So that was like right after Christmas that yeah. we knew about yeah. it. We knew that she was able to get back here, whereas Uja never could get back. She was stuck out there, but she's now got a job and not coming back anyway. Not coming back, yeah. And, right. And um, but I don't recall the first reaction. It was just kind of like, oh, huh, yeah, all right. So, but. So I it wasn't, you weren't alarmed. Like, you, you were not alarmed in any way, shape, or form when you first. No, heard. not at all. Okay. So, what about your prayer I life? mean, she, yeah, she asked us about, um, do we wear masks? And early on, we're like, no, no, that's only if you're sick. 
because yeah. they all wear masks all the time anyway. That's right. Yep. And so they're used to it. Mm -hmm. So, but the prayer life, it's the same as Nancy. It's like now I'm, you know, praying for people and keep other people safe, keep myself safe. I mean, I'm... who else would like to jump in? I heard about it. Let me um, let me get Eileen. Eileen, go ahead. Okay. Um, I I was I'm in a group called Bible Study Fellowship, and we meet weekly. And it started early that the groups in China could no longer get together oh. in person, and they had to. St and we were praying for them. And at that time, it never crossed my mind that we would be in the same situation. Um, and I think that's. Uh, Everyone kept saying, oh, the Americas will handle this. We are great in medicine, et cetera, et cetera, and we'll be fine. As far as prayer life, I find prayer difficult any time, and it's been more difficult since COVID-19. Very good. Very good. Bonnie, were you going to say something? I just, I viewed it in the beginning as an inconvenience. You know, I was involved in you know, the different things at church. I was going to an exercise class. I was going to the athletic events at the university and all that just came to a stop, you know, mm -hmm. or it was like the swim class at, at the city pool was, you know, well, we're gonna delay it, a, you know, a week and then come back or maybe two and then everything was shut down. Um, so that that's why I first viewed it. And then as, as it came to the United States and you know, I have friends all over um, the country and New York City and how severe it was there. And so it became more and more, of course, concerning. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. my family members who have been ill, you know, with cancer and other things. And so prayer life is, you know, just praying again, like the others, for, for the health of people and that... Um, some some change of hearts of others, <laughs> you know, because they're so. Um... Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, thank you. Would anybody else uh, like to uh, address this? As you speak, yeah. it pops up on my screen that you're speaking. So just speak, and it'll. I'll see who it is. And we were about to. Okay. We were. Can you hear? Her? Yeah, we got you. Yep. Okay. Uh, we were going to host a. Uh, two students from China, and they came from that Wuhan area, and the, it was right, almost a week before they were about to come to our house, and the university canceled the, the program. So we were obviously very, very uh, much into reading all about it, and mm -hmm. we were uh, cautious. And uh, as, in terms of my own personal prayer life, I think I... I think I became, and still am, just really thankful for everything, <laughs> everything in mm -hmm. this life. Very good. Very good. We have. Yeah. Yeah. Betty Lou, did you want to add to that anything? Well, it wasn't right after the, the Chinese students didn't come, but it was about the second week of March, and suddenly all the things we had planned to go to the tennis tournament in uh, near uh, Indian, well, Indian, Indian Wells, Wells yeah. and we were going to go to the book fair, the Tucson, you know, the big book festival. Yeah. And, uh, there was one other thing, and they just, that weekend, everything shut down. Mm -hmm. Street fair. Second week of March. Mm -hmm. <laughs> everything. Yeah, exactly. Anyone else? I was going to add, add also that our, our um, youngest son that's in the Air Force, uh, just about two weeks ago, he and his family, they were transferred to a base in Germany. Uh, that while we hate for them being so far away, we feel that that's a very safe place uh, to be. And the way they describe it, if, if you're caught off base uh, without a mask, uh, you, you get a fine. A, a pretty pretty serious fine. So that's a great safe safe place, the safest can be, I think, uh, to be to be right now. So we feel good about that. We'd like to go see them in Germany, but of course Americans are not not wanted. <laughs> not allowed. 
Oh, very good. Over there. Very good. So, so uh, when did y'all first hear about this? When did you guys first hear about it? I think that we heard about it in the news. And so, therefore, I think that, like many others, we thought, okay, this is one of those that we're going to live with and it'll pass. And we didn't take it as seriously as we should. And we went on with life. We did not go out. We were very restricted that way. Mm -hmm. And that worked out just fine as we are continuing to live that new life. But I think that the other thing that in that first question was how has your prayer life changed? And I think that my feeling is that it has not changed. We are okay. praying for people every day. And we just add people that we know now who are more uh, involved than I involved, but have been involved with the COVID-19. And so we offer them in our prayers as well. Very good. Thank you, Tom. Very good. Anybody else want to share anything uh, on this first question before we move on to the second? Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Who was going to speak? I heard a voice. Okay. All right. So... Let me share with you my answer to it, okay? I first heard about it in around January. I started getting a little hint in just looking at the internet that something was going on over in China. And they were, what's that? What's that? Who said something? Okay. Um, and uh, so you have to forgive me. I'm still trying to get people in. So give me just a second to make sure I get everybody in. My apologies. Uh, Catherine, do you want me to unmute you? Are you good, Catherine? Okay, you can unmute yourself, good. I just wanna be sure I got everybody. My apologies, that's kind of the, the thing you gotta do when you're the host. So, um, so, and then I was sick in January. And I, mean, I was really, I mean, I'm sorry, December. I was very, very sick. Let me go back, I first heard in December that something was going on in China. And then I got really sick in December. I mean, weird virus. And like Amy's going, you know, and I came into work through that, stupidly. And Amy's going, because it's Christmas, right? You don't take Christmas off. And I can't breathe, which I rarely ever have had a virus like that where I cannot breathe. And every morning I get up going, you know, caught, you know doing this stuff. So the first thing, my first reaction was, did I have this stuff? That was my first reaction. Did I have this stuff? Since then, my prayer life has changed in regards to, um, first, every day I thank God I don't have it, number one. And I pray to God that I won't get it. Number two, I thank God that Amy doesn't have it. And I pray to God she won't get it, and Patty, and all the members of my family. And then I try to find time to pray for those who do have it, and especially the first responders uh, and uh, the doctors and all those things. So it has become an important part of my daily prayers. Uh, uh, and it's my first Thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, for giving me a day of help. You know, uh, so so that's 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 where I'm at with that. All right, now let's go down to the. You read? Uh, uh, we read. Let me get jump here to the uh, uh, book real quick. I have it here on my phone. Okay, so um, <clears throat> he he talks about the philosophers. Okay, he talks about the philosophers how they approached uh, the Roman or Greek, Greek and Roman philosophers and how they approached uh, things like pandemics, okay? Or just approach the world, how things happen in the world. And, um, and so first you have the Stoics and he said, everything is programmed in the Stoics for the Stoics. Everything is programmed to turn out the way it does. You can't change it. Just learn to fit in, okay? Uh, the Epicureans, secondly, Everything is random. You can't do anything about it. Uh, make yourself as comfortable as you can. Eat, drink, and be merry. That kind of thing, right? And finally, the Platonists. The present life is just a shadow of reality. Bad things happen here, but we are destined for a different world. Now, he asserts that most of the modern West is implicitly Epicurean. Everything is random. You can't do anything about it. Make yourself as comfortable as you can. So um, let's ask this question. And if you responded to the first questions, let's wait till somebody else responds uh, before you respond to the second. So we can get everybody a chance. Which one of the three alternatives, the Stoics, the Epicureans, and the Platonists, 
do you think our society tends to resort to American culture? In times of crisis. The Epicureans, because we couldn't buy flour or sugar or toilet paper. <laughs> Good point that you make. How does that tie into being an Epicurean? Explain that, John. Or an Epicurean approach. It's all about comfort. Good. All about mm -hmm. comfort. Very good. Very good. Um, and then anybody else uh, uh, have a, a point of view other than Epicureans? Uh, as far as what our culture, culture. what our culture yeah, does. Culture. Okay, so we read what the three are. Why do you think that these three alternatives fall short of the Christian response? Let me read them again. Stoics, everything is programmed. Epicureans, everything is random. Platonists, the present life is just not real. It's a shadow. Uh, we are destined for a different world. So why do you think that all these three alternatives fall short of the Christian response? Or what did N.T. Wright say about that? Well, both of those leave God out of it. They, most of them leave God out of it. Very good. Very good. Well, well they, they, they even left the gods out of it in a lot of these three yeah. approaches. Uh, they didn't, you know, they weren't... Um, Plato talked about God in a singular voice. Um, uh, so, but, but yeah, a, a, a very good. They leave God out. Anything else? Why these three alternatives? In a few minutes, though. What's that? Church. Who said that? Oh, I'm sorry. Who said it? <laughs> Repeat what you said. I think she was just talking to. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. So, so why do you, anybody else under, why do these, how, let me ask you this question. How are these three alternatives different from the way we view the world and life and existence in Christianity? Thinking I about think, the three, go ahead. I think they give, ex, they're sort of excuses for the, what, they, 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 they suggest to me a certain passiveness. Um, Very good as a response to things that happen. And I don't think Christianity is about being passive. Very good. Uh, anybody else? But I think we need to be a little careful because I hear a lot of Christians going more with that, um, with the Platonic one. Yes, uh, yeah, yes. No, well, we, there's a better life ahead. We don't right. need to worry about this life. And, if I get it, I get it. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's kind of what I'm hearing from my husband with the Muslim approach, very, that's much more the stoic thing. You know, if it's your time, it's your time and that's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, very good, very good. Yeah, I think, I think Christianity actually in its various theological approaches touches these three in some way. Mm -hmm. um, um, and, uh, and yet at the same time, as we look at the way we as Reformed theologians or Reformed Christians look at it, um, none of them are adequate, okay? Anybody else want to add on to uh, what Maggie said or their own view? Go ahead. Catherine, did you want to say something? Yeah, I, I, I think the, 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 the Christian approach differs in that uh, there's purpose involved. These these other three uh, approaches have there. There's no no purpose to life, but we believe there is a purpose, and the purpose is to show God's love. Very good. And you know we can do that by helping others. We can do that by taking care of ourselves, uh, because we we are God's gift to us. You know these bodies He gave us are actually His gift to us. Uh, so. Uh, to me, that's what the other three lack is any sense of purpose. Very good. Very good. Um, in fact, who can, who remembers, according to N.T. Wright, what did Christians do during pandemics? What did they do? And you've heard me say it from the pulpit. They stayed in health. They stayed. They stayed in health. When everybody left, everybody fled, and I'm going to mention that again in my sermon this morning, they stayed and they helped. And that cha literally changed the world. I mean, N.T. Wright points out later in the book, nobody was doing that. 
Nobody. It wasn't even on any governmental or philosophical horizon that you ever do anything like that. So that was radical. That was a radical act. Um, I, would, I hear some scraping going on or something going on. Um, everybody hear that, what I'm hearing? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I may have to mute everybody and, uh, okay, somebody fixed it. All right, good. Wait, there it goes again. Okay, hang on just a second. All right. Um, then you unmute yourselves or raise your hand if you can't hear it and I'll unmute you. So I'm gonna mute everybody. So allow, pay, yeah, you can unmute yourself. So now I've done that. So now you can unmute yourself. Okay, so now, all right. Uh, but you can, okay, I hope you can hear me. Can you hear, yeah, can you hear me? I'm the host, you ought to be able to hear me. Uh, okay, I wanna read this um, from, the, from the first chapter. Actually, N.T. Wright says, the best answer I've heard as to why, why, um, the last few weeks has not been that question. It's been to the question, what? What can we do? And then N.T. Wright talks about the early plagues, uh, uh, the plagues and, and, and what the Christians did and how that just changed the, the whole perspective of the world at that time. Uh, and if you want to say, make a comment, unmute yourself and just blast in and that's fine. Um, let's go to number three. All right. Again, we'll just kind of open it up. Which do you think are more revealing? What questions or why questions? What intention lies behind each of these types of questions? Which one do you ask the most? That's kind of an interesting question. I, I might have left that out if I had been making the list of study questions. Uh, but what do you think are more revealing? What questions or why questions? And unmute yourself if you, if you can. Okay. I don't think you really get very far when you ask why. Okay. Because why is that? Why is that, Betty Lou? Well, you, how could you possibly know? Very good. You blaming God or are you, you don't want to blame God. And, uh, you know, you, you just see this pandemic going around the world and you think, well, that's what happened. So, so you think more revealing are what questions. Um, uh, so what is the intention that lies behind the why questions? Do you think, I'm going to open that up to anybody, not just Doug and Betty Lou, but to anybody. What intention lies? Why do we ask why? Why do well, we ask why? Go ahead. We want to know what we can do differently to change the outcome. If we know why something is happening, maybe we can go back to the source and fix it. Doesn't work with a pandemic, but there are situations in which if you know what's causing the problem, like global warming, maybe you can do something about it. Maybe right. You can't, but yeah. Right, right, right. Um, and also the deeper question of why beyond the, the why of the pandemic, the why is this happening to the world? Uh, 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 what intention lies behind that question? Well, I'm thinking that we need both what and why. Mm -hmm. We need why to understand, like if the scientists didn't look into why, we might not be able to stop future pandemics, stop them in their tracks. And then what focuses on the action, what actions to take. And I think if we just do what and take actions without understanding the why to some extent, and I'm not talking about spiritual or right. problems, and maybe we're just flailing around and not accomplishing I think both of them are important questions. That's my thought. Very good. Very good. Question for everybody. As you have heard people try to explain this from a philosophical, spiritual, whatever point of view, the broad reason that this is happening, what are their why answers that you've heard? Whether you agree with them or not, what are the why answers that you've heard? Well, there's a lot of blaming going on when they ask okay. why 
happens. You know, who's at fault? Well, China, it's China did this wrong. Right. Or, oh, it's God's punishment on, on uh, the gay good. people or whatever. And so you, you have to be really careful that when you ask why, you're not just looking for someplace to place the blame. But, but we're hearing that, aren't we? We're hearing oh, this yeah. and constantly. Does anybody else want to add to the, what we're hearing? I think also, um, let's not forget what our president said. It is what it is. Hey, what? Which approach? So, is, which? What can uh, we do which, about? which philosophical I'm, approach I'm is that? I'm joking, of course. I'm sorry. To bring I, I, yeah, but which philosophical approach is that? What is? What is what it is? What is that approach? Which one? Yeah, the I, three. I think, it, I think it's stoic and also fits in the Epicurean too. Really. Yeah, yeah, but it is stoic. It is very stoic. But, yeah, right, to, to right. some degree. Um, um, so, so. Um, uh, anybody else heard anything beyond it is what it is or God is punishing? Have you heard any other, try, anyone attempt to try big answers? Mac, I find that when I read this question number three, my, my one question is how? how? How can we, yeah, how? How does it happen mm -hmm. that, this virus is spreading and, and I think, isn't that something works? Yeah, yes, yes, oh yes, yes. Well, how you can tie into what as well. What is yes. it and how, how do we respond to that? How do we do that? I mean, that's yeah. a real Christian question, especially <clears throat> in the Reformed Church. Um, forget, I'm not even gonna ask God why. I just gotta go help somebody you know, or I got to pray for somebody. So uh, very good, very good. Um, I think some of the why is um, absolving ourselves, that it's, we're blaming other people or other, other countries. It's not our fault. It's not our it's fault. Not fault. Yes. It's not my it's fault. Blame game. Yeah, it's them. Yeah, not my fault. Yeah, it's, that's instinctive selfishness, isn't it? It's an instinctive defense mechanism, if you want to call it that. Anybody else heard any whys that are that you agreed or disagreed with? Mac, I have an operational suggestion. I suggest you stop sharing, allow me to share the questions. Okay. Oh, and then you can see the people. Okay. That's fine. Who are some, sometimes waving and you're not seeing, I think. Okay, okay. Let me then let me go to the grid and the full grid. And you go ahead. I'm gonna uh, do us uh, do I need to stop sharing the screen? Yes. Okay, let me stop sharing the screen then. All righty. Uh, okay, uh, stop share. There we go. All right, now everybody's back. Everybody's back. You got it, John. And then you have to allow me to share in security. Sure. Oh, I got to give you the host? No, you just, in security, you have to allow other people to share. Okay, gotcha. Uh, that should just be on all the time. But. Okay. Uh, allow, okay, sorry about that. You're on, you got it. Okay. Okay, so John, why don't we go to the next question, if you want. Be there in a second. Okay. Okay, you should see it now. But I'm still not seeing the full grid, but I can, I can stretch it out, make it full. Hang on. Go ahead, John, go ahead. There we go. All right, I'm seeing everybody now, I think. Yes, yes. So John, did you wanna ask the question? And N.T. Wright points out that we have a God who has a special concern for the poor, the sick, the outcast, and the slave. Have you considered this to be one of the central teachings of the Bible, why or why not? Read Deuteronomy 15, one to eight, and Leviticus 19, nine to 10. So what's the first one? Deuteronomy what? 15, 1 to 18. All right. 15, 1 to 18. All right. Let's hear this, okay? One, that's a long passage. Well, I won't read the whole thing. If there is among you anyone in need, a member of your community and in any of your towns within the land that the Lord your God is given, giving to you, do not be hard-hearted. Um, 
Sorry, do not be hard. I'm going to have to mute everybody again, I think. Somebody needs to mute themselves because we're getting some interference. Somebody, everybody mute yourself if you can. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you should rather open your hand willingly, lending enough to meet the need, whatever it may be. Be careful that you do not entertain a mean thought, thinking the seventh year, the year of remission is near, and therefore your needy neighbor with hostility, and uh, therefore view your needy, needy neighbor with hostility and give nothing. Your neighbor might cry to the Lord against you, and you would incur guilt. If a member of your community, notice the word community over and over again, whether a Hebrew man or a Hebrew woman is sold to you and works for the six years in the seventh year, you shall set that person free. That's the seven year Jubilee. Uh, let's see what else. Remember that, remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt and the Lord, your God redeemed you. For this reason, I lay this command upon you today. But if he says to you, I will not go out from you because he loves you and your household since he is well off with you, then you shall take an all an all and thrust it through his earlobe into the door, and he shall be your slave forever. You shall do the same with regard to your female slave. So don't ask me. So anyway, um, let's uh, think about, I want to go back to that question. I want to add to the question here. Um, remember that you were a slave. Now, this is God saying to the people, the, the chosen people. Remember, and out of your memory, do these things, meet these obligations. What are some of the things that we remember? We remember that prompt us to act as Christians, respond as Christians in a crisis like this. What do we remember? Well, um, one, one of the things that, that we are God's hands, we're to work as, I guess, as God's slaves to do his work, and particularly in times like this. Where do we pick that up? Where does that come from? So I think it's both Old and New Testament. Very good. Very good. Uh, anybody else? What do we remember that prompts us to respond uh, in the way we do as Christians, as Reformed Christians, actually. Hmm. Give me some basic theology here. Okay. Well, the prophets were always, in the Old Testament, were always reminding the people to be concerned about the poor and... Good, good. Um, slaves and so forth. Very good. And Jesus always, you know, paid attention to people who were sick or the people who were in need or had sick children. He was always concerned for those people. Uh, okay, Catherine, go ahead, Catherine. I don't see you here, but Catherine. Yeah. Oh, there you are, uh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, raise your hand and I can see you when you raise your hand. Right. I, I remember uh, the, uh, uh, I, I guess you'd not call it a parable, but anyway, the, the teachings of Jesus that if you have two coats and your neighbor has none, give him one. And nowhere in that does it say, well, check out his background and make sure he's a worthy person before you give him one of your coats. It just says, give him one. Very good. Very good. Uh, what do we see from the example of Jesus in regards to dealing with the sick? What do we see? Because that's another thing we need to remember. Come on, Bible study people. You know, come on. What did Jesus do? Uh, Anne. Anne. Well, I'm, I see it more as uh, he did those things more out of love rather than duty. Uh, he taught us uh, that it wasn't just an obligation. Yeah. It was yeah. something that grew out of love. 
Very good. Very good. Something that grew out of love. Excellent. Not just, and where was it an obligation before? That's a good point to make, a great distinction. Where was it an obligation? In the Old Testament. Yeah. I mean, the law, the law. It, but Jesus turned it from being obligatory to being a mandate. Okay. Uh, Catherine, what were you going to say? Well, I, I was going to, again, uh, call on the, the teachings of Jesus. And he talked about separating the sheep from the goats. And when have you done this to the, you know, and when have you seen us sick and ministered to us? Or when have you seen us sick and not ministered to us? Uh, and as you have done it for the least of these, et cetera. Janet Jones is going to practice. Everybody wave bye to Janet Jones. Well, she's actually already gone, so don't wait by Tori. It's too late for that. All right. Uh, John, would you do the fifth question, final question, please? I can't hear you, John. Could you unmute? Thank you. There. Okay. You're good. Describe your own response to the crisis of COVID-19. Use at least two Bible passages to illustrate how you as a follower of Christ are responding to the crisis. Do any Bible verses come to mind as you think about, and let's, let's broaden it out to how we respond. What Bible verses, little brief snippets or description of Bible verses might come to your mind? And who are, already, uh, uh, Catherine said, share your coat. If you have one coat, you had two coats. Share one with the other. That's a perfect example of that. What else? I think wearing the mask is. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, you're good. Okay. As you know, Jesus said, "Love your neighbor." I think when you're out walking and and you've got your mask on, you're showing love for your neighbor. Love your neighbor. Very good. Yeah. Very good. I mean you know, the things we do, not just to protect ourselves, but protect others, it is an act of love. Correct. Anybody else? Well, I've been uh, noticed in the newspapers, a lot of groups of people and, um, you know, helping other people. And I feel kind of, you know, helpless because, you know, we're 80 years old, we're in this high risk class and, uh, you know, we don't really feel like we can go out and do anything personal. Mm -hmm. Okay, but but what did what did Paul talk about as an answer to that? What is Paul's answer to that question? For anybody who could think about what it is, what is it that represents us when we can't do something? Well, you can contribute to to what people that are doing things. Well, what is what is that? Who what what? Who are we talking about? Church. Church, exactly. Gotcha. Exactly. I mean, we're running the food bank. We made 600 sandwiches yeah, yesterday. I mean, all th kinds of things are going on by people in the church. Bonnie, you're making masks, right? right. Well, that's right. why I have a, a passage from 1 Corinthians about there's different gifts, but the same spirit that gives them. And so, you know, praying is a gift. You bet it is. Sandwiches is a, is a gift. Sending cards is a gift. So. We, and accepting the fact that some of us can do things that others cannot do. And there's nothing wrong with that. Certainly not feeling guilty about that because that's why our church operates. That's, that's why we have the church to represent us, um, uh, to do the things that we cannot do ourselves. And, 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 and that's a wonderful thing. I mean, that's the, this is an example of the power of the church in the midst of this, that it can continue functioning as a church, even though it may not be, everybody may not be meeting together, we still function in the power of the church. Like uh, our special offering to help the masks project today. Um, uh, that's a perfect example of that. Uh, all these things we continue, we just, we don't stop being the church just because we don't meet together. Uh, the, the, each of us is the church. Each of us is the church. So we're almost down here to, that's the fifth question. That was the one for the, for that we got, that we, that we finished up with. Um, I want to, I want to share a little bit um, from the, um, we've talked, we've run through that first, first chapter pretty good, uh, touching all the bases and all the points. 
Um, he, N.T. Wright says, and I quote, some are saying eagerly <laughs> that this is the sign of the end. This is an apocalyptic event. Why would they be saying that eagerly? That's my question. Why do they say that eagerly? I, I think because they're looking forward to that better life to come. Very good. That's certainly one reason. Mm -hmm. Certainly one reason. Like are, there, are there other reasons why they would be eager um, for this to be the end of the world? Uh, I'm afraid that some of them are, are just waiting to see the punishment dealt out to those who are not believers. Yeah, you're going to finally get yours. Finally, you're going to get yours. And what's the problem with saying that? What's the problem with saying that? How many fingers are pointing back at you when you point like that? <laughs> Number one, yeah. I mean, it's judgment. It's judgment. Um, uh, and it's not just judgment of right and wrong. We're supposed to discern. It's judgment of heaven and hell, which really is not. Uh, we are not at that. Uh, that's not our uh, pay level, I guess they would call it. That's not <laughs> our, we, th that is not our job. Um, so very good. Uh, uh, yeah, the, that, that, that idea of being, you know, wanting to see people suffer. And, and that's, there's a problem with that, along with what Bonnie said. There's another problem with thinking that this is directed at certain people. Now, that goes along with the last question for me because I chose Matthew 5, 44 that says, love your enemies. There you uh, go. Very good. That's my prayer life. I'm having to work real hard on that one. Um, <laughs> love sure. those who hate you, that type of thing, because we're just seeing so much hatred in our country right now. It's, 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 I'm going to talk about that mm -hmm. in my sermon today. It is amazing what's going on. And um, uh, to see this and to be the one national community that is not doing anything. I mean, that is not responding as a national community. That's responding, I don't know how you call this, but uh, it's almost like a tribalism. I don't know what you call it, but responding with just absolute challenge to any authority, um, I, which is, you know, I mean, and I'll, I'm not going to give you my sermon, but it's coming. So, um, so okay. Uh, any other thoughts before we conclude? That's our time. I got to get ready to go in, and and we got to do the service. Um, any other thoughts about chapter one before we conclude? And give me your feedback. If we can do this a better way, we'll do it. it maybe we'll do the breakout rooms next week. I'm it's good to have so many people, but if if we can, maybe we can do the breakout rooms next week. But we get better at it as we do it. So any other thoughts of this first chapter? Where do we go from here? Okay, let's have a word of prayer. See you next Sunday at this time. Same time, same channel. Okay, let's bow our heads and pray. Lord, be with us as we lift our thoughts to you. As we think about, Lord, how you changed the world and changed hearts and changed the focus of bad times and catastrophes and disasters, whether personal or whether broad, that Lord, we are simply to ask, what do we do? What is, how can we fulfill the purpose for which you called us in doing these things? As we read chapter two, Lord, open our minds and our hearts to the questions and uh, to hearing what N.T. Wright has to say in the Old Testament, and thank you so much for giving us this time together. Uh, bless us and uh, keep us safe until we see each other again. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Have a Bye. safe, God bless you and have a safe week, okay? <laughs>